Look at that. Perfect. Straight shot. Have you finished the um, cutting the intercooler and welding it? I already welded the, the, the bottom piece, so one of those left. See right there? I didn't oh, yeah. weld that all the way through because, you know, if I have to move it around or whatever. Right. They get it so cheap. I just want, you know, and it's great quality aluminum. Seamless too. You get it for, I mean, just cheap. Hmm. I think this thing was like, um, what, thirty-two dollars or something. Wow. You know, roll that piece of the hose. Mm -hmm. It looks thinner than the other ones you were doing. Looks like it'll. Well, the other ones look a little bit thicker because since they're mandrel bent, when the ball. See, this is called mandrel bent when when the when the radius is perfect all the way through, right. and it's not it's not crimped over here like cheap muffler pipe. Mm -hmm. Okay, so when they roll the ball through it. Uh, to, to pull it out, um, sometimes it drags material and it, it gets thinner on, on the, on the uh, inside radius, I'm sorry, it gets thicker on the inside radius and gets thinner on the outside radius. That's why it was easy to, to turn at some points and then it got tied at others because the thickness is varying. Mm. Beautiful. Cut a bend out of a um, out of a three-inch tube here. Cut it. Cut it. Cut it in the middle of the band at a 90 and then chop off the, 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 the tip and it'll end up like a bullet, like a bullet nose. So it'll go like that and like that. Mm -hmm. Cool. No, I'm talking about the wide body. Just like that. Yeah. Back then we didn't know what we know today. <laughs> That's a long time ago. It really is brutal. Top to bottom instead of side to side. Mm -hmm. So um, it allowed me to clock the turbo in a certain direction to come to this tank and then the, the, the other tank coming from the bottom to come underneath the car and up. Side to side is basically the same thing, but um, you don't have the flexibility. On the turbo side you do, because the turbo you can clock it however you want. 
Um, I, I personally like to put them with the outlet towards the bottom. They just look, in my, in my opinion, they look more attractive that way. In this application, we couldn't really do it. But uh, if you put it towards the bottom and you don't see it, like in that car, in the Miata, and then you, know, you come in from the bottom up to that, up to the throttle body, it looks a lot cleaner. You don't have, you don't have a whole lot of pipes. In the Miata, we couldn't afford to do this, didn't have the space. Um, it's a lot shorter car, you know, so I was forced to come underneath and behind the sway bar and kind of the same thing, but, but comes more this way, you know, and maybe after having done this one, I might clean that one up a little bit more and on this side, on that side, it's, it's perfect. It's, it is as it is. Um, yeah, we could, that's not good. It's just in this car, it just turned out to be a lot more compact. You see, it's essentially it's the same thing. But, you know, with, with the turbocharger housing, uh, the, the, the loot turned down and the outlet coming straight on the bottom, it's cleaner. And on that, on that side, it's basically the same thing. Underneath the radiator, behind us going up. But, um, you know, there's more space between the radiator and, I mean, the intercooler and the... Uh, and the, uh, by virtue of the, the body of the car, you know, I, before the, the intercooler was over here, and I really wanted to separate it to get, you know, gain some air density. A lot, t a lot more tidy, a lot, uh, a lot less travel for the air. Do we have any brake cleaner? Yeah. No, it was for the other uh, transmission. Do you do the same kind of um, dumping of the uh, wastegate on this motor, like you're talking about on the three-stage motor, or no? Yeah, you could, but it, it becomes really difficult. Um, it would require a, a, another, another an internal wastegate turbocharger. Um, you know, for a street car, it really isn't that it isn't necessary. I mean, it just depends how crazy you want to get. You know, yeah. See, something like that with a with a slight bend here and a straight shot. <laughs> what are you tacking? Oh, the the I'm thing to I'm the tacking the tube to, to the, the plate. Okay, yeah. So. And, and the raw and, and this thing has to be smooth so that the wire, which is a spool inside the machine, and it's got some rollers that push it. If it's kink going along like this, it, it, it doesn't flow at the right rate. Yeah. Okay, see, if if the gasket was not there, I could have grounded anywhere in the car. Uh-huh. But that gasket will isolate the part that I want to weld, so I actually have to ground the actual part. Uh-huh. Okay, and there's a gasket there too, so I can't grind I can't ground the, the wastegate. No. I actually have to get into the part. That's not easy. Alright. Grab that stud right there. Now, then it's real. You can either do it too fast right. or not fast enough. I got if you. Do it too fast, it'll splatter. If it's not fast enough, it'll just spit and, and, and not do anything. Right. Beautiful. 
See that? Yeah. That's all you need. That's all I need. Well, I need one on top. Right. But you see, I, I, I focused more on the heavier metal yeah. than the light one, but it went enough to, to grab yeah, it. Yeah. Two, two welds is minimum, but you see, it wasn't really hot enough because it left a little ball here. Uh -huh. I got to give it more heat. And that's because that stainless flange is pretty heavy. Right. If, if, if it's perfect, it'll just finish off without balling up. Okay. Now, you, two tack welds will hold it in place, uh -huh. but it, 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 it will still allow to swing, especially the two tacks are like this. So it's ideal to triangulate it and have at least three tabs, that way you know it's not going anywhere. Right. I'm going to try to get another one on this side. Could have been the right place, but didn't do it long enough. Could have been the right place, must have been the wrong time. <laughs> Remember that song? <laughs> yep. <laughs> now that caught on fire, is that normal? <laughs> See what happened just now, I increased the current, but I didn't increase the feed rate. Uh -huh. So so it's it burned too quick and didn't feed enough. Yeah, this shit's tricky, huh? Yeah it is, it just takes practice. So you don't think you got a decent tack there? Nah. It barely got it. Got the right spot, but not good enough. So did you bump up the feed rate to yeah, what? More. You're about a little under halfway. Mm -hmm. That's a beautiful there you spot. Go. Yeah, see that. All right, now we can bring the car down. You gonna leave the grounding wire where it is? Yeah. perfect spot. There's a little splatter and that was from before but that now I've got three three spots. Yeah. That's going nowhere. Okay. Now I need to take it back up and adjust it to 20. Oh yeah. Adjust the regulator to 20 which I didn't check either. See? That's way too fucking much. <laughs> Welded on the outside, like in between the bolts. Mm -hmm. But, you know, do a complete welder on the inside. And uh, it looks better on the outside. And it's, you know, you got a full surface all the way around. So you weld it on both inside and outside? Uh, yeah. And then these two little hot hash marks with these will go together and then I can continue from there. Mm -hmm. Is that why that has like the angle shape to it like yeah, we were exactly. talking about before? So exactly, which I have to do to this side, but that's where it's going to go. Mm -hmm. And I've already done it on this edge. You see, it's, it's just a bevel. Yeah, yeah. It's just like a groove for, liquid for, metal to, for the well to go, go into. All right. Now, let's go. 
and the flame will try to go to one side or the other and it's really impossible to tell which so you gotta move it because this is thick I increase right off right from the get-go I'm giving it more amperage well, this is stainless and this is mild that's why I'm using this eutectic rod it's called silicon bronze in England they call it eutectic and I you know I got used to uh, when I got the prototype and I went out there and I worked with those guys for about a month, I got used to that word. Here it's called silicon bronze. Alright, so I'm basically going to rest it right now against both surfaces just to see where the arc is going to go. Then I'm going to move it out and, and maybe have to make an adjustment. Here we go. See how the stainless is starting to puddle? Mm -hmm. But the the other metal is not. Because I have it more pointed to the bottom. Right. Now, I'm wide open throttle and I, I, I didn't have enough heat. So I gotta give it more amperage. Okay. And now I went to the tube and I want it on the fucking flange. You really don't have a whole lot of, when you start that arc, you don't have a whole lot of control where it wants to go. You heard that little noise? Uh -huh. That was the, the mild steel from the, um, the MIG welder melting. What do you mean? Because this is this 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 tack was here. Oh. I made three tacks. So obviously I'm 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 going over it. I'm going over I'm heating up stainless steel, which is real thick, three eighths of an inch, and going over it, that thing just sizzled. Mm -hmm. Okay. Alright, I got it. 